Welcome to Good Heart Connections, a podcast of Good Neighbors Canada, where we cover inspiring stories, share impactful insights, and connect hearts to make a better world. Join us as we meet extraordinary individuals, explore remarkable projects, and together, let's build a brighter future. Stay tuned for a dose of compassion and a world of good in every episode. For our fourth episode, we had a meeting with the Chair of the Board of Directors of Good Neighbors Canada, Ms. Beth Leizener. We talked about her career in community development, her role as a social enterprise coordinator of the second largest food bank in Ontario, and her message to our audiences to take part in the Sustainable Development Goals. Hello and welcome to Good Heart Connections. Our guest for today is Beth Leizener the chair of the board members of Good Neighbors Canada, and also a, the current social enterprise coordinator of North York Harvest Food Bank. Hello, Beth, and welcome to our podcast. Thank you for squeezing us in your schedule. Thanks so much for inviting me and having me on today. I appreciate it. First, can you tell us a bit about your professional journey? How did you become get involved in community development and now chair of the board members of Good Neighbors Canada. Yeah, for sure. So um, ever since I can remember, I have been interested in other people, their perspectives, their experiences, um, which I do think is an important aspect of community care and um, community development. Um, You know, it's just being mindful and considerate of your neighbors. Um, So I grew up in downtown Toronto and I always felt connected to people. Uh, So when I was deciding where to go to school, I had come across a program that really resonated with me and my interests. Um, So I went to Western University, formerly known as University of Western Ontario in London, um, here in London, Canada. Um, And the program is called Media and the Public Interest. So um, I got to study social movements, I got to study activism, community development, international development, but it was all coming from a critical media theory lens. Um, So it was very uh, multidimensional and a a dynamic introduction into that world and that kind of work. So when I moved back home, um, I actually didn't fully dive into that type of work because I did have other interests I wanted to explore as well. I wasn't sure, I was 21. I didn't know what direction to go in. You know, I was also interested in art and culture and fashion, that sort of thing. Um, So I started working in in e-commerce, but uh, so I started working in e-commerce because I had the media and communication background uh, already built in for my my education. But I also always sort of um, was geared towards small businesses. I always worked in woman-owned businesses. And I think I maintained the community mindset, uh, even when I wasn't directly involved in community um, development. So from there, I ended up working in, uh, so when I was working in e-commerce, I worked for a retail uh, consignment store. So that's sort of where the light bulb went off, because a big focus of consignment is, uh, you know, like, Uh, textile waste diversion, the circular economy, um, making retail more accessible and inclusive. So in that space, it sort of reset my trajectory. And that's when I went back to school and I studied sustainable business management. And I also started working in nonprofit. I was working for a social services agency that um, provide housing and services for women uh, in crisis. and when I went back to school in sustainable studying sustainable business management, it also highlighted that sustainability isn't one dimensional. It's very much um, interconnected with all these other like social issues and economic issues. So when you're studying like the, the SDGs, the sustainable development goals, you're thinking about poverty and food insecurity and health and well-being, not just climate and environment, even though they're all tied in together. So from there, um, I, with my background in e-commerce and digital platforms, um, but also in sustainability and social impact, I found my current job, which is very interesting and I think quite, quite cool, um, 
it's uh, I work for a social enterprise at, at a food bank. It's the second largest food bank in Ontario. And um, what we do is we're a food distributor or like a food supplier to the nonprofit sector. So, and this is all done through an e-commerce platform. So you can see there that like all the bits and bobs that I've accumulated over the years, actually I'll tie into this job. Um, so, and what we do is all the revenue that we do generate goes back into um, our programming, um, purchasing food for the food bank, uh, goes back into advocacy work. Um, so that's sort of where I've been for the past few years and the getting to this point where I'm the board chair at Good Neighbors was sort of by accident. Like I did want to join a board and I did reach out because I was interested in this kind of work. It's a little different than what I do because it's on a global scale. And it's uh, there's still a social enterprise component to um, what Good Neighbors does. Um, and it does seem like very community led work on the ground. So even though it's like a huge global organization there's like community work being done. So I did reach out and I was like, oh, I wanna join the board. I see there's a um, call out for this and I've never uh, been on a board but I feel like that's a good way to sort of like apply my expertise and all the things that I've developed over the years and uh, becoming board chair was the accident. So uh, it was sort of like at, they were switching over and um, I just happened to be in the room at the right time. <laughs> and so that's sort of where I'm at. Um, but I, you know, I think that doing something new or for the first time uh, is just like a, it, it doesn't make anyone like less qualified. It makes you will, if you're willing to do something new, I think that's like a really good, um, skill set to have or like approach, you know, attitude. So yeah, that's sort of where we're at now. So in, in your perspective, um, what are the factors that make humanitarian initiatives successful and impactful? Mm -hmm. So again, because so much of our work is like community uh, driven and for the community, by the community, that sort of thing. Um, the, I think, I mean, of course, like food insecurity is a humanitarian issue, definitely. Um, but one thing that I think is really interesting is uh, like the work that I'm doing right now feels very innovative. I think like innovation is like a huge component to um, in this day and age, like how organizations can move for, move move the needle and you know be impactful. So, like as someone who has an interest in communications and digital platforms and technology and that sort of thing, I think there's a lot of room for that to merge with uh, social impact, environmental change. Like there's a lot of, um, like you'll now see there's like apps out there that are addressing these things. There's like all these tools and softwares that are trying to, you know, for fundraising and different things. It's like all move to this like digital world where like we're really finding efficiencies and how to uh, move the needle there. And I think in this space historically, it's always, it's often been underfunded and just overlooked like as a space in general where innovation can exist. Um, but I do see that shifting a lot more. So, and when I think of it, innovation, it doesn't just have to be like tech. It can also be just like new ideas and new approaches to solving sort of age old problems and questions. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot of organizations adapting to this. So for example, like we're, we're a food bank. What food banks are typically known for doing is just handing out food, um, which doesn't really like address any root cause issues, but what, what we're trying to do is, for example, we have a program where we can, um, we employ people um, to learn, we basically pay people for a training to learn where, warehousing skills. And after that, we put, put them in a, there's a placement, like a job waiting for them at the end of that, once they complete their, uh, however long it is, like a few, it's a handful of weeks. And once they complete that, there's a job waiting for them. And that actually like addresses the root cause of people not being able to afford food because they probably didn't have a job or they didn't have means to um, like accessing uh, the amount of the food that they need to feed their family. So this is like a new way of thinking about how we can address an issue like food insecurity. So, so it is like innovation, like in general, innovation and also adapting to technology that makes this initiative much more significant, especially sure. in, this, in this digital age. Yeah, like I think being able to use tool the tools that all these other big companies and corporations and 
whatever else are using and like why can't nonprofits and charitable organizations also utilize those functionalities um there's an app i like and this isn't this is this app is not like a, a charitable app um but what they do is they address waste diversion because um you can they they partner with all these different uh small businesses like food like grocery stores or restaurants or whatever and they partner with them and when that restaurant is is um uh looking to throw out their food at the end of the day they actually can put it on the app and say hey like we have this like surprise basket and someone can buy it at a really reduced cost and it's like this technology is like connecting people on so many levels so it's like addressing the the food waste issue it's also like um generating more revenue to these small businesses and it's creating more accessible food for people that are like buying purchasing that surprise basket and i just think there's like really cool ways that innovation is like addressing these big issues including like us using an e-commerce platform um to make food more accessible to nonprofits and organizations that are looking to procure food for their own for their own needs speaking of innovation and being involved in charitable organizations some of our listeners are really interested to be involved in community engagement but some of them might not know where to start what advice would you give them mm -hmm. so i think uh one one my suggestion is not to stray too far from what you know so um what I mean by that is like, do what you feel comfortable with, lean into your strengths. Um, if you're a quiet person and you like to focus on a task, join a community garden or like volunteer to sort at a food bank. Um, if you like to network and you have like a loud personality and a strong voice, like get involved in advocacy, public speaking, like getting messages across. Um, you know, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be in the role that I'm in if I didn't like explore these other things that I'm interested in and good at um, and like, and you know, like for me, I, I like the arts. And so on the side, I, I work and write grants for artists so that they can um, access funding for their projects. You know, this is something that like I personally like and that's how I see that I, how I choose to um, create greater impact. Um, my mom, for example, she worked in finance her whole life that's that seems like the opposite of of charitable work but what she is doing now that she's retired is she um works uh in a she like uh, volunteers her time for a tax clinic so she does taxes for free for people who don't like who are unhoused or low income and need to access their government funding and they can't uh do that until they fire all their taxes and they just don't know where to start so you know there's lots of ways that you can get involved using either like your skill set or your interests or like just like connect like being self-aware of like your personality type and there's always something for everyone so I think like just don't feel like because you didn't study something or you didn't you don't work in something you can't participate like there's always room you kind of touched down on it a little bit earlier regarding the technology that would give you the the, the 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 unused food so okay yeah that part from your expertise and experience what is uh the impact of partnership and charitable initiatives that you've worked on mm -hmm. yeah so in my role collaboration is is really everything so like for our project to actually become successful and to keep you know being able to so what we do is we're, the more customers we have, the better we can leverage our, um, like consolidate the purchasing, purchasing power of the sector and leverage that to reduce pricing, for example. So collaboration is huge because for our product to become more successful and, and have trickle down effect with um, reduced costs for nonprofits, we need to, um, we need to connect with them. We need to collaborate with them. We need to understand their needs. We need to understand our customers. Um, so we can't really do that without, you know, this, this um, partnership 
Um, and, you know, I think that's what community really comes down to when you're trying to talk about community development and that sort of work. It's not about one person and it's not about throwing money at a problem. It's like really about like, how can we leverage all these tools that the community has um, and create change through that effect. So like mutual aid is really, really um, taken off lately where we sort of go beyond expectation of um, systems and structures to, to, you know, solve problems and just like the community address, like tackling them ourselves. Um, and I think it's just about like taking care of each other and listening to what our needs are. And um, it's, you know, worked historically for centuries and it seems to be the thing that's continuing to keep people afloat. Can you also sh share us a heartwarming story from your involvement in a nonprofit organization that you consider to have a significant social impact? Yeah, for sure. So a lot of my work is in is in like behind the scenes, like a lot of operations and logistics and um, you know, sometimes I'm in working in spreadsheets and you have blinders on when you've got like deadlines and projects and stuff. So, you know, um uh it's sometimes easy to like lose sight of that a little bit. But I think one thing that like, I'm always, when I'm like, I'm always surrounded by and reminded by um, the impact of this kind of work is when my colleagues are people that have previously been like food bank users or, um, and they worked their way up and became volunteers or, um, and then got hired on, or they were part of a government program uh, uh, and they got hired on full time. Like I think, when you are um, surrounded by these people, it like illuminates the fact that people in vulnerable situations aren't any less capable. They're not any less intelligent or qualified for a job. They're just like in a bad spot at a bad time. So there's so much potential from the people around us within our own communities. And it's just like not really fair that like there happens to be barriers that are placed in front of them. Um, because at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, these you know, my colleagues that have been in these situations are some of the hardest working people. They like are really, really um, purpose driven and for the cause. They also have like a lived experience. So they know best about what the needs are of these communities. Um, so definitely like being reminded of that when I'm working alongside these people on a regular basis, it's like really great to see the impact of what the work that we do has, but also that it's like a good reminder that like you don't need higher education like all this high education and internships and this and that because there's people within our communities that are like really capable and um yeah i think nonprofits are one of those places that you'll find most likely takes a chance on on people from the community so because you know they're looking to um really tackle an issue and like they know best um about the work that needs to get done Speaking of barriers and tackling an issue, Good Heart Connections wants to give emphasis on local and global challenges. Uh, in your opinion, what are some of the most important social issues that we should be addressing right now? Well, I can be a little biased because I work um, on behalf of the food bank and see issues around food insecurity and the how they're, you know, rising. Um, and that's really tied to the affordability crisis going on in Canada and, you know, kind of on a global scale too. Um, so I think that's like at the forefront of my mind. And I think for a lot of Canadians is at the forefront of their mind too, because it's just, it's hard out there. <laughs> there's, there's, um, it's expensive. Like I know I've reduced my spending when it comes to like, like grocery stores and I eat out way less. I don't do takeout, like that sort of thing. I'm always looking for ways to cut costs. And I can't imagine people who are in a bind or, you know, going through crisis, um, being able to feed a family, you know, it's really hard. Um, and at sometimes it's impossible. There are like these immediate solutions like a food bank, but it definitely doesn't solve the problem. You know, so then we also have to think about like, what are the other things that are connected to that? Like 
housing of course is another big one like people can't afford rent so they have to make the decision between paying the rent or the mortgage or you know doing a, a run at the grocery store and those are really interconnected um and then also because i do uh, a lot of buying for our program i see that climate change i mean i know like this is a hot topic but climate change really is a big factor too because that's been a, a huge um it's impacted like the cost of food it's impacted how we get our food and like this whether there's a surplus or a short um the quality of the food even when it comes to like transportation like if the roads are blocked because there's been you know a landslide it's gonna, there's going to be a delay in getting essentials um and so this kind of goes back to what i had mentioned when i was back in school is like the idea around sustainability and like social impact and all that it's they're all there's not one issue that takes precedence over the other because they actually are all really interconnected and tied um so I think there's a lot going on and it's like hard to decide where or like it's hard to know where to start but I think there's a lot of really smart people that are trying to work on solutions and I think that's like the big the big thing that we have to focus on is like solutions and what do those look like and instead of feeling like there's all these big problems and it's really scary and there's a lot of doom it's like well again like there's solutions when it comes to technology there's solutions when we're trying to um you know address like there's so so many new innovations coming out and that's like really feeling like the hope that i have is like there are some people out there coming up with with really incredible um new ways to address these issues on a regular basis so we'll we'll see <laughs> Uh, I've seen like large corporations have their sustainability reports and they have their sustainability goals by 2025 and 2023 uh, to mm. 2030. I mean, mm. so, so before we end our conversation, do you have any advice to our listeners to encourage them to create a more connected and a better world? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that like we all have a, 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 a large amount of compassion built into us like inherently as humans I think that's like something that we that we just like have naturally like I don't think you need experience or knowledge or education to have that and I think we all also like want to feel connected so I don't think it's about like figuring that part out I think it's just like I did like you just send out an email <laughs> start the conversation like reach out to reach out somewhere or you think you might be a good fit, or I mean, just to learn a little bit more, even if if um, it's something you want to do. Like I think all the like everything is there if you if you want to get started. Just like press send. <laughs> and essentially, like volunteer your skill set to any nonprofit organization that could use what what you have. Like what's your experience, what skills? Or what you want to learn. Like maybe you don't have the experience or the skills, but you're willing to learn something new. And like, that's also just as important, you know? Like I think the willingness and the want to be part of like purposeful, meaningful work is like the ultimate determining factor of like just getting out there and doing it. And that concludes our podcast. Again, Beth, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.